it's even more impressive when we get down here. All of these logs, they're just incredible. A million logs floated on Spirit Lake the day after May 18th. The, the lake was covered with logs. They thought the lake was gone. It looks like a beach, doesn't yeah, it? It does. But it's logs floating yeah. over deep water. You know, the thing that I guess I first noticed when I got down here is how these things appear to be almost milled. I mean, they're rounded, they're smooth. What, what causes all of that? They floated uh, for years now, 35 years, these logs have been floating in this lake. And they uh, rub against one another and they're milled. Obviously, the, the, the big observation to make here is the bark is mm -hmm. gone mm -hmm. after 35 years. Mm -hmm. And why don't we see, I mean, all this bark has been stripped off and these logs have been milled. Why don't we see all of that residue floating? It's uh, obviously waterlogged and soaked. Uh -huh. In 1979, I defended my PhD dissertation on the floating mat model for the origin of coal at Penn State University. What I was interested in was how a coal bed in Kentucky formed. And as I studied the coal bed, it became evident to me that it did not grow in place in a swamp, but that the coal bed formed from logs rubbing and making uh, bark, bark falling to the bottom and accumulating sheets of tree bark underneath a floating log bed. That was the model that I defended for my PhD dissertation. And that was before all this happened. Uh, ten months before Mount St. Helens exploded, I defended my PhD <laughs> dissertation on the floating log mat model for the origin of a coal bed in Kentucky. And then, and all then of what sudden happened? You had one here. And right here in my favorite volcano at Mount St. Helens uh -huh. in Washington State, we have a floating log mat for study. Now it became a concrete reality, so I had to go diving and I had to go explore this log mat in this unusual environment. So are you telling me you've been down to the bottom of Spirit Lake? I'm trained scientific diver and <laughs> I've done uh, the, the dives to the bottom of the lake, up mm -hmm. to 100 feet. And what uh, did you find there? I'm looking, looking at the, the bottom of the lake to see what the sediment is like that's mm -hmm. accumulated there since 1980. Well, yeah, it's, it, as you might imagine, it's abundant sheets of tree bark. That's where the logs deposited their bark, is on mm -hmm. the bottom of the lake. The water-soaked exterior of the tree rubs against another tree and is peeled off. Water-soaked, it swells, it sinks to the bottom, and you build up this thick, spongy layer of plant material called peat. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it's formed underneath the floating log mat. Was it a thin layer, or a thick layer? How thick was it? Yeah, the organic material that accumulated under the floating log mat was up to three feet in thickness huh. and over a wide area of the lake. There was not a, an area of the lake that didn't have a large quantity of plant material. And the primary plant material is sheets of tree bark. And it reminds me of the coal beds mm -hmm. that I was studying in Pennsylvania and in the eastern United States and Kentucky where abundant sheets of tree bark are found in the coal bed itself. So the, the plant material that accumulated in the bottom of this lake is very much in the texture and composition like the coal beds in the eastern United States. So what you're seeing here, does it look like we have the precursor to a coal bed right here? It, uh, this is the f uh, first step for the formation of a coal bed. Mm -hmm. We haven't completed the coal bed operation. We need another volcanic eruption to bury the bottom of the lake to make the plant material be compacted to form coal. But we have seen the first step for the formation of a coal bed. So let's suppose we had another volcanic activity here and we had a what would be a mud flow? then that might come in and, and yeah. cover it? Yeah, or another uh, summit uh, avalanche deposit could yep. very abruptly uh -huh. bury this. And, and uh, but, uh, or what was uh, down on the bottom of the lake in 1980 that was buried? Could that be coalified sitting down there already? Mm. So, so do you think it can, uh, it can, that process can produce coal in that short of a time? I think it can. What we need is burial to squeeze out the water and then we need a little bit of heat. We don't need a lot of pressure to make coal, but in the laboratory we can make a coal, coaly like substance uh, very rapidly in weeks just by uh, compacting uh, the water away and then generating a little bit of heat. Internally, wood 
uh, generates heat when it's sitting away from oxygen, uh, the idea of the hay in the barn kind of thing. And so, uh, but yeah, oh, wood can be coalified, and uh, that's, uh, uh, that, that's known from laboratory experiment. Thank you.